Hello, I am Dr. Rashid Ahmed from the Department of Physics of Kohat University of Science and Technology. In the subject of particle physics with the course code PHY452, we are at the lecture number 11 and the topic is the quark model. As we know that the eightfold way provided the first ever classification scheme for the elementary particles. However, it was not clear that why the eightfold way is so successful. In order to provide deeper understanding of the eightfold way, Mary Gelman suggested the quark model. The quark model is about the particles hadrons, which are the only particles that feel strong force. And they are in fact composed of even more elementary constituents, which Gelman called quarks. The quark model has two components. The first component is about baryons, for example, protons, neutrons, and lambdas and deltas that are made of three different quarks. And the second component is about mesons like pions, kaons, and muons, which are made of two quarks, that is quark and anti-quark. To provide a clearer explanation, I give you the schematic diagram of hadrons, and they are of two types. The first type is of baryons, which are made of three quarks, and the second type of mesons, which are made of two quarks. Here baryon means heavy particles or heavy weight particles, and the mesons means the middle weight particles. Now, according to the quark model, we can construct the eightfold way patterns, geometrical patterns for all baryons and mesons. And in this way, then we can construct all the uh, octets, baryon octets, meson octets, baryon decouplets, and meson nonets. All these patterns can be made out of the quarks. So let's first start with the baryons and construct uh, one example of the uh, quark model that is a geometrical pattern where we can distribute quarks on uh, to uh, for any baryon. We will start with the example of a proton where in a triangular eightfold way for the quarks will be constructed. Since there are three quarks inside a proton or a neutron or any uh, baryon, uh, we can have a triangular uh, geometrical pattern. And then as you know that, that uh, to every corner of this uh, triangle, uh, we will put uh, a particle uh, that is a quark. But before that, we have to assign two properties to every corner. The one is the strangeness and the second is the charge. So let's assign s is equal to 0 to this corner and in, the, in this line, uh, the second corner will also get the strangeness s is equal to 0. And to the bottom corner, we can assign s is equal to minus 1. And then the, to assign charge, we, uh, we assign charge to this corner minus 1 by 3. Here you note that the charge is fractional. Quarks are the only particles, fundamental particles, which have fractional charge. But their charge inside the uh, baryons or uh, mesons add up and then the, uh, the visible charge is actually integral charge. Note that a single uh, quark is not uh, visible or not experimentally detectable. And then to the second corner, we assign charge is equal to 2 by 3. Now, since we have assigned the properties of strangeness and charge to all the three corners, we are ready to put some quarks over there. So let's put uh, quark D there uh, on this uh, leftmost corner, upper corner, and then U here and the strange here. Uh, these are the three flavors of uh, quarks. Uh, in the next uh, lecture of uh, uh, this chapter, I will explain all the flavors of the quarks uh, in inside the standard model. But for the moment, you can just uh, concentrate on the eightfold way uh, type patterns for uh, for uh, baryons, and this is the first ever example we have constructed. And uh, you might be thinking that what about the anti part of uh, this? For example, if we have an anti proton, then what we can do? So we can also construct a similar pattern, but in that case, this triangle will be upside down. For example, here you can see that we have uh, uh, inverted the uh, geometrical pattern, and now we are ready to assign a strainness. For example, s is equal to 1 to the top uh, corner, and then s is equal to 0 to the bottom line, and then the quarks, uh, the charges, uh, to s with the help of two slanted lines, and now we are ready to put the anti-quarks at every corner to make up the anti-particle, anti-baryon. Now, since we have constructed the eightfold way type patterns for the uh, baryons, 
uh, now we show that that the combinations out of the uh, combinations of these three quarks we can construct all type of baryons for example let's go to the baryon decouplet where there are 10 particles and you see that the out of the combination of these three quarks we have constructed all the 10 particles in this decouplet for example the first particle that is lambda plus plus with a strangeness 0 and charge 2 is constructed out of three up quarks and then the two up and one d quark gives us the lambda plus and so on and in the bottom you can see this famous omega minus particle with the three strange quarks and this was the particle which was first um, in the eightfold way predicted by the Gelman and then later on experimentally detected. In similar way we can construct the meson nonit out of two quarks combinations of two quarks. Here it is important to note that this last corner there was no particle there with the two strange quarks but then there was an experimental observation of eta prime which has these properties that is strain is zero and charge zero and have two uh, made of two strange quarks. So you have seen that the uh, the reason for the eightfold way to work very well uh, was that there were uh, there were more elementary particles called quarks and different combinations of these quarks were giving us the uh, baryons and mesons. But this uh, uh, quark model has also have some uh, problems with it or uh, some advantages or disadvantages associated with it. For example, the exotic particles. The exotic particles were those particles uh, which, were n which were not allowed by the quark model. For example, uh, a baryon uh, with the strainness is equal to 0 and charge is equal to minus 2. Uh, you cannot construct out of any of these three quarks uh, a such particle. And then people started searching uh, to find out that whether uh, these particles can be experimentally uh, uh, discovered and if they were so uh, the uh, quark model would have been destroyed but uh, never such uh, particle is discovered with the properties which cannot be made out of three quarks and similar is the case for the meson for example with s is equal to plus two and charge is equal to minus three no ever meson exists because no uh, two quarks combination can uh, have uh, can be uh, can be made to have particle uh, of uh, these properties so these are about the exotic uh, particles uh, which were searched in 70s and 80s quite heavily experimentally but never found so this is uh, the uh, one um, one successful uh, explanation for the quark model that these uh, exotic particles do not exist and the second uh, important and very um, you can say uh, famous thing is quark confinement. The idea of quark confinement is that no one ever has uh, experimentally seen the single quark. So uh, then the question is that why we don't see a single quark and um, uh, can not uh, can we not sep uh, can we not separate uh, meson into two uh, its parts quark and anti quark or cannot we pull out one quark out of the baryon? Uh, the reason is that uh, the energy you need to separate out a uh, quark from the uh, meson or baryon is so high that, that this energy then uh, goes on to create another quark and uh, you never see a single quark. The idea of not seeing, not being able to see a single quark is called the quark confinement. But uh, what one can do is to go inside the uh, proton or neutron or any meson or a baryon and there uh, type of uh, do inelastic scattering like uh, Rutherford has done uh, in order to uh, discover the proton uh, where the alpha particle was bombarded on the uh, proton and they are uh, seen that, uh, uh, ins uh, that inside the atom there, uh, there are nucleus exist and protons exist. In similar kind of inelastic scattering one can see that inside uh, protons there are three lumps of uh, charges uh, giving us the uh, experimental observation that there are actually three quarks present inside uh, the proton or neutron or any other uh, baryons and similarly two uh, quarks inside the mesons. So the idea of quark confinement is that single quark cannot be seen. Then uh, there is another very interesting thing associated with the quark model is the color charge. If we go back to this uh, table 
uh, here you can see that in the meson nonit we have two uh, quarks in uh, inside a meson uh, of exactly the same nature that is up up similar is the case over here you can see that three quarks uh, uh, inside uh, lambda plus plus they are all three up quarks now if you remember the Pauli exclusion principle which says that no two uh, particles uh, two no, uh, no fermions can exist in the same state then how it comes how comes that inside the uh, for example lambda plus plus there are three similar exactly the same uh, up quarks are uh, are arranged and uh, they can uh, coexist with each other so in order to avoid this uh, poly exclusion type uh, uh, problem uh, in uh, 1964 greenberg proposed that in addition to the coulomb charge quarks carry another charge which he called color charge and this color charge actually comes into three uh, types the red uh, so every up quark has a uh, has a red color that is a red charge and then the blue charge and then the green charge so every uh, quark comes with three uh, color charges that is red blue green here it is important that it is a, it has nothing to do with the usual colors but it is just the aesthetic sense out of which this this charge is named red blue green and it has another very interesting property that since mm, uh, the combination of red blue green uh, gives us a colorless uh, thing so these colors are not observable inside uh, our uh, high in, uh, low energy uh, regime uh, because uh, these quarks uh, naturally uh, uh, combine together and the naturally occurring particles are colorless so this is another uh, interesting thing associated with the uh, quark model that bringing us a, a, a new type of charge which we called a color charge with this i thank you all and it, uh, you can ask a question if you don't understand anything thank you very much